you may begin. Hey, everybody. This is Dave Dugdale, learningvideo.com. Really? Learning video. Are you changing DSLR, your... learning video. <laughs> really? Are you changing your, your, your URL? Oh, you didn't know that? No, tell me about it. I already did. It's oh. if you go to learningvideo.com. I did it right before NEB. Um, that's right, because we never got to meet up, and it's now learningvideo.com. I bought the domain, spent probably too much money on it, but uh, I finally got rid of the DSLR because I don't shoot with any DSLR cameras anymore. I'm shooting with mirrorless. So I was. Totally I've been happened. wondering what you were going to do about that. So yeah, good. you wonder about other people like Planet Mitch and uh, Cinema 5D and Caleb Pike and some of those other people. Uh, what they're going to do, but yeah, I finally got rid of the well, the DSLR. Off the record, I'm dying to know what you paid for the URL. No, I don't mind. I don't mind. It was, what it, it what was, did it cost? The guy wanted two thousand bucks. I was like, no. I said, how about a thousand? He's like, fifteen hundred. I was like, how about thirteen hundred? He's like, sold. And I so I bought it for thirteen hundred. Which that's, for me, that's not that bad. For a it's URL. not too bad because you know when you think about all the times you have to type your email address in or stuff like that, just those four little letters that helps and also explaining it to somebody um they're like dslr they're like digital what does that stand for right, right. single lens reflex nobody knows anymore right it's yeah it's all mirrorless so it's just learningvideo.com that's it that's awesome okay well congratulations hey thank you so to my audience um we did this last year chris and i did a an edit um it was kind of cool last year uh, chris had never seen any of this stuff um, so he was, he was looking at the, for the very first time this year, it's going to be very different. He's already seen the footage. Um, and I've actually cut the piece already. And one of the things I think is really cool. Um, somebody with like Chris has years of experience compared to me. I have maybe five years experience. You have, Chris's. Ye you have years of experience. You should stop cutting or selling yourself well, short. I mean, compared to you, you have what 30 years of experience of cutting and I have five years of cutting experience. But anyway, when it comes to cutting music, it can be very difficult to, um, to cut it, you know, to actually cut the music and re engineer it. Basically it, it, it can feel almost, uh, like a daunting task because, you can splice it in wrong and the chorus and the verse doesn't work correctly and stuff like that. And you want this moment to hit at a certain moment in the, the video. And Chris does this for a living all day long. And I would thought it would be really cool to watch him kind of recut my piece with uh, this music and see what he does with it. So what we're going to do, or actually Chris is going to do is basically drive this, this kind of thing where he's going to demonstrate what's going on with this particular edit. Yeah, so, and and I'll say, I, you know, we hope this works. You know, we were supposed to hook up at NAB, and my schedule was busy, and y you were extremely patient and gracious, and I completely blew you off when things did not, when cards did not fall. So um, we're doing this. We're using Google Hangout. We tried some Skype. We're doing some screen flow, and uh, there's a whole lot of tools we're using. Hopefully, everything works. So um, what do you say we... Uh, dive in and I'll walk you through um, the way I deal with music when I'm working on an edit. Yeah, it'd be great. That'd be awesome. Okay, let's take a look at this. I don't want to pretend everything was super easy. You know, you gave me a, a premiere project and I got to say, either I don't understand XML, you don't understand <laughs> XML, or Apple and Adobe don't understand XML, but it was not an insignificant task to get your project from Premiere into Final Cut 10. Um, this, uh, I was doing it in the old version, Final Cut 10.14. It might be better with 10.2. Now, um, what I have here in actuality is um, I have uh, the B roll is here. There are moments of uh, on camera bits. Where are they? There are some. There's a few parts where there's like graphical elements that um you know we're not really worried about the picture okay let's just say yeah we're, we're not really worried about the picture and there should be other and also just say that you know when the xml came over all the lumetri color grading that i did and speed grade yeah, none I, of yeah, that i want to say across. that your piece looked great and well, i i you. thought it looked really nice and so anyway uh, why don't we not see her do, do we not see her until the very end we 
We don't, but if you wanted to recut it in such a way, because I, I recut it slightly differently from the time I gave you this XML okay. to the time I delivered it to her. And I did actually show her at the very beginning because I think you get the sense that she's in a very reverberant room, but you never see her and you're like, well, where is she? You know, right, right. It's not like this mic, she's like breathing on the mic. She's like, you know, three or four feet away from the shotgun. <laughs> well, we're going we're gonna to deal with some of that stuff too. So the first thing that I'm going to do, what I have here is I have a track that's down below my primary storyline, which was actually a reference cut that you had sent me. I've then recut the B roll and the A roll or the primary storyline in Final Cut 10 terms is her, is her interview. Um, great story, by the way. It's about a woman who um, lives in Hawaii and she's a wedding photographer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my... Um, uh, my music bin here or my keyword collection actually and if I pull this out I can kind of get sort of a mini timeline of the song and I always do this when I look at a piece of music because I get to see I get to see the shape of the song so there's a there's an intro here and um, and then it gets full and then there's sort of a resty area where you know it kind of sort of a downbeat thing and then there's a, it builds up and then it has a lung decay and so it's good to it's good to see that. Now, as a matter of fact, um, you know, I think that there are some music libraries that actually show you a waveform when you're shopping for music. Um, this is a premium beat song. We're both big premium beat fans. I would love it if they added that feature, but it's something that I always do when I open up a piece of music. So, excuse me. The first thing that I do is I will play through the song and use it. Um, you know, all edit systems have some way to apply a marker. So like if I were to put my cursor here and hit the letter M, it allows me to put a little marker there. Now I'm going to delete that marker. But what I'll do quite often is I'll play through it while it is still here in my bin. And this is important because any markers that I place when it's in the bin, this was the same in Final Cut 7, Final Cut 10. It, I don't know what Premiere State of Affairs is now. But when you place markers in the bin, those will... Um, follow through to every instance that you put that song in the timeline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hit the home key and I'm going to hit play and it'll give us a chance to hear it. And I'm going to put markers in and in some instances I'm going to actually lay it down. Um, I'm going to mark out measures. So like four counts, okay? I'm assuming this is a, a the song is in 4-4. Four, four. Most music is. Um, so let's, I'm going to hit play here. <laughs> It has what I would call a soft open. Here's a big downbeat. See it, it's looping there. It's kind of the same theme again. Now it's gonna build right here. One. of eight the underscore or the bridge whatever is is a single group of eight the reprise is one group of eight and then you have your fade okay so yep. now, now we have our song all mapped out and we should understand the song now again premium beats music or premium beat music rather is designed to loop very well and we may actually take advantage of that so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to pl place my cursor right here at the beginning of the piece and I'm going to hit the overlay key, which is actually going to underlay. Um, that's just the way it, it kind of works in Final Cut 10. And I'm going to zoom in on the beginning here. And I'll actually kind of fix this a wee bit. Okay. Now, if we look at our map up here, there was a big hit right here, which was kind of a, it's a big emotional, it's a big emotional bit of the song that hit there. And I want to see where that lands with your music, okay? I, actually, I can see where it lands with my beats right there because there's my first count. 
But this little jump right here, I thought that was really cute. That's like a, that's a sort of a neat little moment. And I might want to align this with that cut of music, with that, with that jump there. So let's see how that aligns. And here comes your VO. So when I was little, I used to beg my mom to buy me the big wedding magazines at the grocery store. And sometimes she would. And I'd have a big stack next to now it's making me realize we may have jumped into the music a bit early. So let's let's I'm gonna mute the music here for a moment and just listen. So when I was little, I used to beg my mom to buy me the big wedding uh, magazines yes. at the grocery store. That's the reverb sound you're talking about in the room, right? Yeah, I was recorded in the kitchen and uh, <laughs> we wanted to do it outside, but there's like guys with leaf blowers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's look at the levels. Wedding magazines at the grocery store. It's actually not and too bad level-wise. I might want to boost it a little. And I'd have a big stack little. next to my bed, and I'd go through them, and I'd dodge. I'm just going to I'm gonna look at my audio inspector here. Uh, I don't think I've done anything. Yeah, I haven't done anything of note to the audio. So first thing I want to do is I want to boost the level just a little bit. And what I'm going to do, and this is sort of, you know, Final Cut 10 stuff, is I'm going to go down here to my audio. Actually, I'm just going to use the search function. And I am going to go ahead and search for the word gain because I, I like using a gain filter as opposed to using the volume knobs. And I'm going to just gain that up about 3 dB, not a whole lot. And then another thing that I do all the time is I've just put a simple limiter on it. And that's just to kind of keep the transients down. And, it, and with that limiter, actually, I can usually boost it up a wee bit more. So when I was little, I used to beg my mom to buy me the big. Yeah, I'm actually going to bring it down a little. I'm going to go back down to plus three. And then now we're going to do the mat. We're going to try and get rid of some of the. To buy me the big wedding magazines. Of the yeah. So the, the reverb of the room, we're going we're gonna to pull out some big guns. And we're gonna try. <laughs> we're gonna try and use um, the Isotope plugins. Now, um, Isotope is really cool. Um, on this particular machine, we have the RX3 version. There is a new RX4 advanced version, and the people at um, uh, Isotope were very cool to let us use this. So, what we're gonna use? Is yeah, the, they were. I actually stopped by their booth and I said thank you. Yeah, were, cool. So, nice. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by putting the D reverb. Believe it or not, they have some algorithms that will listen to the reverb in a room and try and minimize it. Now, I oh, whoops, that's my gain. That's a simple one. Here we go. Here's the uh, controls for the D reverb, and I and I'll tell you, I barely know what this stuff means, but if I play so when it, I was little, I used to beg my mom to buy me the big wedding magazines. Of the so there it is with it on. I'm going to turn it off. When I was little, I used to beg my mom to buy me the big wedding magazines at the grocery store. And we can reduce more with this slider. So when I was little, I used to beg my mom to buy me the big wedding magazines at the grocery store. And sometimes she would. And I'd have a big... That's right there. We have a huge difference. Oh yeah, it's. I can hear it. it's a big difference. And, and yeah, and you're listening on Skype, so. <laughs> <laughs> so and then the last, then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm, they have another plugin called the Dialog Denoiser, and Dialog Denoiser, it's it's almost imperceptible, and unless you're actually sitting right in front of the speakers, but. Um, so when I was little, I used to beg my mom. But I like to describe it as it's almost like you're putting. Um, it's almost like your your guest is sitting inside a, like a like a blanket fort like you'd make when you're a kid, you know. It because you're just in this this soft room instead of a loud reverberant. So when I was little, I used to beg my mom to buy me the big wedding magazines at the grocery store. So that that's all. That's the sum total of everything we've put on her. We've put a little gain, a little limit, a little de reverb, and a little denoiser. Now, if I turn all that stuff back off. And we'll do an A B comparison. Here it is without. So when I was little, I used to beg my mom to buy me the big wedding magazines at the grocery store. And then we'll turn it all back on. Tink tonk, tink tonk. And we'll play it one more time. So when I was little, I used to beg my mom to buy me the big I think wedding magazines at the grocery dunk. store. 
And yeah, it gives you the option to be not show her if you don't want to at the very beginning, because like I said before, with not showing her and there's so much reverb, you're like, well, where is she? Is she in a tennis bracket court or something? Yeah, or, yeah. It's, you kind of wonder if she's not on tough. top of the mic. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and select all these clips then. I've already copied my my presets from the other um from the first clip and I'm going to do a, just a paste attributes command here and I can paste all of my effects all at once and so now my audio uh, for Natalie is done okay now we can get to the music so it, when I, once I've done that I should be able to drop in anywhere and it should sound just as good as as possible because something transformational happened cool all right so now let's get into the music okay sorry for uh, getting off uh, out of out of uh whack there for a bit um the first thing that i do and again this is sort of a funnel cut 10 thing is whenever i start cutting music the first thing i do is i put it in what's called a sub storyline you hit command g and you get this little black wrapper around it and you'll and it basically makes this thing act like it's a track and it gives it all the same magnetic timeline properties that you get in your primary storyline in final cut 10. now the magnetic storyline or the magnetic timeline is much maligned but i think when you start to embrace what it does for you it's actually quite powerful and you're going to see that in just a minute so now we're going to zoom in and we're going to look at the beginning of the piece here because i do want that big hit to happen when she jumps okay so let's listen to this and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm listening for So when I was little, I used to beg my mom to buy me the big wedding magazines at the grocery store. And sometimes she would. And I'd have a big stack next to my bed and I'd go through them and I'd dog ear all my favorite pages and carefully cut out the ones that I liked the best. And I don't know, something of that has probably stayed with me because now I'm surrounded by weddings. So it's not much off. I just I wanna I want the I want the big hit to happen more like maybe when she falls into his arms. Thanks. Love it. You know, just a little. So what I want to do, I, I'm if it's okay with you, I might want to change the timing of things a little. But I do like oh, go. I very much like the way you've cut it. I don't know that I want to change her her pacing of her read. Let's listen to it one more time. So when I was little, I used to beg my mom to buy me the big wedding magazines at the grocery store. And sometimes she would. And I'd have a big stack next to my bed and I'd go through them and I'd dog ear all my favorite pages and carefully cut out the ones that I liked the best. And I don't know, something of that probably stayed with me because now I'm surrounded by weddings and I love it. You know, I like the way you've cut her dialogue. I don't, I don't really want to change the dialogue. But I do want. I, I need. I basically I need the music to be a, a couple of beats longer because I want this hit to happen after this. So now we're listening to the music, in terms of what we can do. I'm gonna mute her now. Hear this little um, bit in the guitar where it rises right here, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's sort of distinct. But up here, I think I might be able to stretch this out just a touch. Okay. So what I've done is I've added another marker. This is one of the markers I put down where I mapped it, and, if, and, and here's what I meant about putting markers up up here. This new marker does not appear in the bin because this okay. is this is uh, specific to the timeline, but I think we might be able to loop between here and here. I'm gonna listen to it again. I think I have it. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to extend it out just a wee bit. That'll put the jump right where he catches her. And that's actually not a bad edit. It's just musically a little weird. And then I'm 
going to do this thing where I change it from an S to a plus three. I'm pretty sure. Um, there we go. And watch for the jump. Right as it catches her. Well, I'm not okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to do, and you've heard, you've seen me do this trick before. We've played our music down a little bit and we're probably going to pull it down a little bit more because we're going to have to turn her voice back on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to trim. We're, we're not going to trim. We're going to make a couple of marks here. And I'm going to take your B-roll or excuse me, your dialogue. And I'm going to put this rest here. Just I'm going to make it just a touch longer. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, um, I potentially could just throw a bunch of B-roll out of focus. or Excuse me, not out of focus, but out of sync. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little Final Cut 10 trick here. And uh, people who watch my show or listen to my show, rather, they've heard me make reference to the, the I call it timeline um, kung fu. So I'm going to just do one of my little timeline kung fu things where I'm going to take and make a sub storyline into a sub storyline and if you don't work in Final Cut 10 this doesn't make any sense to you and then I'm going to drop I'm going to drop it right back down and the reason for that is I want that stuff to to remain in sync um, with the b-roll that's underneath it so then I'm going to take actually let me make this a little shorter here so we have ah there we go now we're much better so what I want to do is this little measure here I want the rest here to be just the same length as that I just think it's going to fit with the music a wee bit better. Okay. You see how this is right there. My wedding. I love it. Well, I'm not in this. And then what I can do, um, actually, it can be a little bit shorter because I want it to, she starts talking right there. And this is just an effect shot that you've done. So this is going to be easy to extend out. You're a smart guy. I'm sure you can do that. So I'm going to, you're going to be getting notes back from audio going, yeah, dude, I changed your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything after that. And I'm just going to bump it down probably about 8 or 10 dB. And then we're going to take the stuff before it. And I'm going to take out some of these, um, some of these through edits. And I'm just going to take this part of the music down a wee bit also not a whole lot actually i'm going to put another slice right here can you see why we changed why we called our company name slice we do a lot of slicing <laughs> and i'm just going to drop this down a little bit so it doesn't fight with her and then i'm going to put a crossfade here and i'm going to extend that out to about two seconds so when i was little i used to beg and then the last trick that I'm going to do when she's talking, I'm going to use what's called a channel EQ. It's just a, it's a parametric EQ. And um, if I type in chan, there's my channel EQ. I'm going to place that right there. And when you open up the channel EQ, it's, it's a parametric EQ. And this is a thing, you know, I've talked about this a million times where... Um, Basically, you don't need to turn everything down, but what you do need to do is turn down the, the, the portion of the sound file that gets in the way of the human voice. And Natalie's going to come in probably at about 1,000 to 1,200 hertz. And so I can just sort of dig this little hole for her, pulling it down. What is it? That's probably a little too far down. Pull it down about 14 dB. What's that say? So when I was little, I used to beg my mom to buy me the big wedding magazine. Now that actually sounds like it's too quiet. So yeah. I'll bring this up a little bit. Because I when did I that little, same trick myself on the edit, and I think I brought it down the... like maybe 6 dB. But like oh, on the on the EQ? Yeah, on the EQ. I okay. I put it around around beg my mom hertz, to buy me just... the big. <laughs> Wait, where did you put it? I put it more in the sibilance area of her voice, which is around 3,000 hertz. But I, right. and you know what? You have told me that. And I want to play. I wanna, if you don't mind, I would like to take this opportunity. Well, nice and big. Yeah, go right ahead. To buy me the big wedding magazines at the grocery store. And sometimes she would. Okay. Nice and big, my mom. To buy me the big 
wedding magazines at the grocery store. And sometimes she would. And I'd have a big stack next to my bed and I'd go through. Go back and... To beg my mom to buy me the big wedding magazines at the grocery store. And... I used to beg my mom to buy me the big... The bottom line is, can you understand her and do you still feel the... When I was little, I used to beg my mom to buy me the big wedding magazines at the grocery store. And... I like that. So where are we? We're at 16 and we're down 12. Yeah, 12 dB seems like a lot. When I was but little, I, can I used to beg music. my mom to buy me the big wedding magazines at the grocery store. And our music is only, uh, we've only pulled the music down 4 dB, which if, you, you know, if you've done this a lot, a lot of people are like, oh, pull it down 12, 18 dB. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that single clip because we have our, our, our kind of failed music edits in here. And I'm going to copy those attributes of the channel EQ and the volume. And now all of that's taken care of. And actually, I can do that down here also for the remainder of the song. So we'll go channel EQ and volume. And now that's all adjusted. Now, this part, this portion here where we didn't dipper, um, I do want to, um, I can select this and put a couple of cross dissolves. And I'll also do those at about, well, we'll do about 110. And because now I'm surrounded by weddings, and I love it. So we'll now when you say down. 110, 110 frames? No, um, what is it? it's one second, 10 frames. Okay. So 40 frames. Uh, actually, no, you're probably doing 24 frames. Yep. Yep. So it's one second, 10 frames. And I love it. I'm to my weddings, and I love it. Well, I'm not a destination photographer because I already live in an amazing destination. Now this, at this point, the music has swelled a lot more than the intro, so we will pull it down. Well, I'm not a destination photographer because I already live in an amazing destination. I feel like the luckiest girl to be able to live here and do this in one of those the most amazing places on earth. I get to meet people on one of the important, happiest days of their life. Everyone is feeling good, they're looking good, and they're all very present. Are we missing a soundbite here? Did I accidentally turn something off? Present. In this day and age of distraction and smartphones and laptops, it's so nice to see people really enjoy. Oops, and I'm gonna have to apply all the same filters to that. I think I had accidentally turned a, a soundbite off. So we'll the put one. all the, the thing about technology. In this day and age of distraction and smartphones, <laughs> How ironic that the piece about distraction <laughs> technology <laughs> is the one I screw up. Phones and laptops, it's so nice to see people really enjoy where they are. My style is a sort of organized go with the flow. Again, I think I might extend out your rest here. How, out of curiosity, how did you choose the rest point? Um, I was kind of going for those parts of the music where it, where it has that kind of reverse cymbal crash or whatever it is, that that type thing. So I was trying to put moments in there. So I was kind of massaging My those style. things around um, okay. the sound bites to kind of you know, get me to that point. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, I just listened to it without any music just to begin with and just trying to feel how natural it would feel if they weren't butted up to each other where the rest would be. So. Right. Um, I th so, so you you were cutting to the music to a certain degree. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. So, so what do you do when your sound bites are a little bit long? Do you just say, "Well, I'd like to have the." Have you? Let me ask you this: Have you ever actually cut content because it didn't match with the symbol crash or whatever? Yeah, if there was something like a, they said something, I would try to cut out that you know if they said a um or and and i could just make it just a little bit shorter that to make it match i would especially on this type of piece most pieces that this one i spend a lot of time on <laughs> but uh yeah I, I sometimes do i always find it interesting when sometimes you're you're cutting and you just go oh yeah that sound bite fits perfect with the music and i i'm always amazed that people can cut without the music you know and and in some instances you know, you can just dump something on a composer and say, write something awesome to this. 
And I, I don't know how people work that way, to be honest with you. I just, I can't, you know, I, I always, even if it's just a temp cut of music, you know, you got to cut to something, I would think. Yeah, yeah. and like you've yeah. talked about to it, I think it's totally true is that the music is kind of the backbone of the piece. I mean, her voiceover obviously is too, but um, where the musician already kind of created those, you know, spikes or whatever in the music that you want to use, you, um, I would say use the music first then position her and then you need to fine tune it later doing what you're doing, what you're doing where you're taking out little pieces of the music to make it fit just a little bit better. That's what I've seen or heard you talk about before on different podcasts. Yeah. Let's get back to it. I want to take, there's a little, there's a little like mini rest here. I might want to make it. I get to meet people. I want to, I'm poor. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to swell our music up just a little bit here. We'll put our little markers in our little cut points. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the EQ off there. And then we will copy the volume from our previous one. So back here was our last swell. And we'll copy our volume in there. Okay. And that'll pop it up a bit. That might be too much. We'll put some fades in. We'll do the same thing. Um, uh, one second and 10 frames. Amazing places on Earth. That's a little too much. So we'll just bop this down a bit. The most amazing places on Earth. I get to meet people. I want an important, happiest day of their life. Everyone is feeling good, they're looking good, and they're all very present. In this day and age of distraction and smartphones and laptops, it's so nice to see people really enjoy where they are. So this sort of recurring theme, the boom, bam, dun, dun. My style is... And I'm just going to make this rest a little bit longer. And we'll go to here. Uh, I don't want to... My style... Yep, there's a flash frame in there. And by the way, um, I want to reiterate this, Dave. You, I thought you did a great job on this piece. It was really well done. Hey, thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was, it was, it was done. Well, the, the shooting part was done quite quickly, but um, it was fun to edit. And then we'll do the same drill with the music swell here. I'm going to select this bit here. I will match the volume, but I will turn the channel EQ off. And again, so that's just we're 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 changing. We're um we're we're going between two different EQ settings on the um on the music. Really panel. enjoy where they are. My style is a sort of organized go with the flow, and I'm constantly reading everyone to see. I also want to say that I'm getting little audio hits in this and I think it's because we're 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 Google Hangouting, we're uh, running ScreenFlow and we're running Final Cut. So this, this poor little iMac is getting hammered right now. Um, <laughs> and the That's best life well. and show who they really are. When we're at the beach, I am constantly I like this bit about the beach. Now I'm gonna I hear your the, here's your reverse symbol thing. When we're at the beach. So I'm going to, I do want to preserve that. I think that's really nice. It's kind of a neat little um, moment in the track. You know? Yeah. The only thing I, the only thing I did there was I was trying to emphasize that symbol where I didn't, it didn't feel right to me. So I just, I had a lot, I don't know. It was like a little, um, fade, not fade to white, but had a little bit of white in it and it um, blended into the where she's taking her foot off her shoe off there it just i just made a little bit of a flash kind of thing to but that's about all i did i was i was having troubles with that i was trying to figure out because it to me it didn't feel like it quite fit but it kind of fit when we're at the beach i am 
And again, this is just the, you know, the Fenwick audio hit trick. Copy the volume, turn off the channel EQ. Command T gives me my transitions. If I select both of them, I can change the duration of both of them simultaneously. And show who they really are. When we're at the beach, I am... Hey, do you guys, what do you call it as a photographer when you take the camera down and you look at the back of it like that? Chimping? Yeah. I don't know. What, what, <laughs> why do you guys call it that? It's such a weird word. I, I remember somebody like Scott Bourne explained it or something like... Uh, Is it because your, your your elbows go out like a chimp? No, I think it was more like a monkey see, monkey do kind of art. Was, I can't remember the reference. So um, by extending this shot, I get I catch her chimping there, which I think looks less professional. So I'm gonna at the at the length where the shot was. If I shorten that, and then I just go into I'm just I'm totally Final Cut Ten cheating here. I'm just gonna time stretch this out just a little bit. So I can cut off the chimping frames. Oh, that's cool. You know, so it's like 93% whatever. You're not going to see it. How to cap Now, it, 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 it looks better when it renders. We'll let it render here real quick. But, um, yeah, I, mean, I do a lot of time stretching stuff like that. You know, just little bits, you know, that you don't even see. When to see huh. I knew, how to yeah, capture them how to try in the best light and show who they really are. When we're at the beach. And then if you're, if you want, you can also, and again, this is a Final Cut 10 thing, you can go in and turn on the optical flow and it even looks better. It takes a little bit longer to process, but we'll just, we'll just let that happen in the background. So, um, moving on. Constantly trying to get people's shoes off as fast as I love this little story about her shoot, taking the shoes off in the water. And, and I love, oh, a question. Did you shoot the interview first and then go shoot the B-roll? Well, no, but I had two or three Skype sessions with her, and I asked her to answer the questions that I gave her. And one of the things she, when she, when I did the interview, like we're doing right now on Skype, because she's in Hawaii and I'm in Colorado, she talked about this whole thing of you know getting people's shoes off. I was like, oh, we got to use that somehow. And so when we were shooting the B-roll to begin with, I had that in mind. I was like, oh, we definitely need to include some B-roll of that. Very good. I mean, you know what? It's that's like producering 101, you know, know your content. I did a I did an interview a couple of years ago with my uh, with my old boss, Stuart Chaffe, and I talked to him about how how to do a good interview. And he said, first of all, you never ask a question you don't know the answer of. It sounds like a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was a lawyer, to be honest. He was a lawyer. Um and um, or maybe is a lawyer. I don't know what what his bar status is. But um, yeah, you never you, you want to know where you're going. And you know, to be fair, he was primarily talking about you know a live to tape interview, not you know that the kind of interview that you're doing is sort of an exploratory. Hey, let let me learn your story kind of thing. But um, yeah, it's good you know to know that you know you've done the pre-interview and it and it affects. Can you imagine if you had shot this whole thing? And she talked about going to the beach. And, and I didn't have And it's it. like, well, it seems to me I think we might have a shot with her with her feet off. And it's like, you know what, just because her she's got bare feet in the frame, it doesn't mean it's a shot of her bare feet. You know what I mean? I mean, and that, yeah. as an editor, that frustrates me. No, I know we have that. And you're going through and you're going through and you're like, well, I don't see any shots of bare feet. And I want the shots that you have here. And then they go, oh, yeah, there it is. It's like, no, that's like from 100 yards away. You know, it's not the story. So it's great that you knew that and you knew to shoot it. And anyway, I'm, I'm, try I'm giving you compliments because I think you did a great job on this piece. Okay. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Moving on. When we're at the beach, I am constantly trying to get people's shoes off as fast as possible. And you shot a lot of this stuff over cranked, right? Sometimes I did. There, I had two cameras, the A7S and the GH4, and the GH4 is 24 frames, and I believe I was shooting the A7S at 60 frames. Learningvideo.com. <laughs> <laughs> because something transformational happens when their feet hit the water. Once they're relaxed, they start to let go, and 
play and have fun and see me having fun with them instead of me behind the camera. But there's there's a there's a there's a different story here. There's the feet at the water. Right. And then there's the relaxed. And I'm sorry, I know I'm supposed to just be editing your music, but I'm I'm seeing little little things I would like to touch. Um, I want to look. I'm I'm gonna look at this shot. I'm just gonna match right. match frame into this shot of the feet in the water, and see that you have more of it. Yeah, and then look off yeah. in the distance. Okay, not a whole lot more. Oh yeah. And then look off in the distance. Yeah. <laughs> I love the way you're directing it. Now, <laughs> now be awesome. Start being awesome now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Okay, so you you don't have a whole lot more of that shot. So we might do a little an, another time remap thing. I want to put just a tiny breath here. Not a big not a big breath. And in actuality, I don't even uh, Let's go. Let's go. They're two different stories. You just like to separate them by a little bit. Just like 20 frames, you know, not a lot. Make, so make it breathe a little bit. Just a bit, yeah. And I'm just going to take this stuff. And go. Just listen to this. He hit the water. Once it relaxed. Yeah, that was 10 frames. Make that just make a little bit more sense because it's a new thought. Interesting. And, and I butted them up together. I didn't even think of that. Oh, I forgot. You don't have any more of this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna do another time remap here. It's, it's not even a remap. It's just a stretch. What did we get that down to? Eighty-seven percent. And we'll do the same optical flow. We'll come back and look at that stuff later. Um, okay. So listen, but listen to the way it feels now. Something transformational happens when their feet hit the water. Once it relaxed. They start to let go. Tiny bit. It's just a, it's not, it's not a lot, but those little rests can really, you know, it, 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 it's like, it's punctuation, period. Right. Phase. Yeah, it's like you're just starting a new thought and you've taken a breath kind of thing. Let go right. and <laughs> play and have fun and see me having fun with them instead of me behind the camera. I'm passionate about what I do because I really love weddings. They're just beautiful and fun and special now I'm gonna do the same thing but I don't really need to change anything because you already have a gap here and I'm just gonna push this clip down see how see our gap over here this is our 10 frames you actually yeah. do have a little gap here just a couple of frames I'm just gonna push it just a little bit more fun and see me having fun with that instead of me behind the camera I'm passionate about what I do because I really love weddings. They're just beautiful and fun and special. Yeah, you know what? Her story's great. She really, you can totally sense, you know, how into her job she is. You know? Yeah. And it, yeah. it makes for a really great story. Although, I, you know, I told her when I was doing the interview, I was like, I don't want you to say the word passion. I want you just to be um, passionate. Be passionate. I was like, oh, but she said it anyway. It was like, <laughs> that was the best line that she had that felt most passionate. So I used that because it was actually, we did a few takes on that particular line because okay. it was very scripted. A great photo to me is when there's the beautiful light, wonderful emotion, and you get that moment that's The beautiful light, wonderful emotion, and you get that moment, that split second moment. And when it's all there, it melds together perfectly. Maybe that's the way the magazines made me feel when I was little. I know you're I know you're cringing watching this going, you screwed up my timeline. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. As long I don't I don't care, but as long as other people know that, you know, the, Dave, the version that I have Dave the XML, did a great version. <laughs> that the XML stuff didn't come through on those photographs. So what you're seeing and you know, they're blended in with the other frames and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's 
Yeah. But no, it's all right, because what we're talking about here is mostly how the dialogue and the music match up mm-hmm. with, you know, the B-roll on top, but, you know, it's your foundation, like you talked about before, is like the music's at the bottom, then you've got a dialogue, and then you've got her interview clips, and then you got the B-roll on the top, so the, and the, this picture is, that, is not as important, right. so as long as the people that are watching this understand that, you know, what what you have right now is is a not what I bastardized did. Yeah. version of what you had done yeah. yeah because the xml stuff just did not work yeah, well i don't know what we were doing wrong i'm so glad i don't have to deal with xml every day so what you <laughs> did here is you took this eight count out and if i and if i were to go back into the music map that we made if you will we're going to take this section out right here okay we're going to take out this eight count right here it's like eight measures and you can hear right before the eight count and right at the end of the eight count that reverse symbol here. Okay, and it's and we're gonna hear it again right here. Okay, so which means we can probably cut here and here, and it's just gonna be magic. It'll be interesting to see if this works, because that's not how I did it, but it'll be interesting to see if how yours works. It worked? Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. It's not bad. There's a little tiny pop in there. And sometimes when you zoom way into the subframe yeah, level, it's not a sample, although it's often referred to as a sample, and it should not be. I think I can see the problem. So you see this lighter gray to the right of my playhead? Mm -hmm. That is one frame. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's a little. You can. can, So in this, you can actually cut the audio on a subframe level. Right, right, right. Which you can can do in Premiere, but you can't. And here's a question for you on a, Mm -hmm. you know, final, final cut question. You can't cut obviously the video on a subframe level can you of course not no okay so, okay. so what wanted... i can do here though is i can <laughs> I just know they have some magic stuff going over there but, but if you see <laughs> now, now, the right hand number is my frame count and i'm just going to pull it in like that i haven't even changed a frame yet okay now i got to zoom out because otherwise i don't have any lead into this there that sounds better there's a there was a little tiny pop that is gone now Yep, you got it. Okay, so we're better there. Now you you had some special effects that I lost in my transfer, and and I think that you should play. You know, you need to post both versions of this. I think I'm, I'm debating whether or not I'm even helping you here. No, no, this is point. very this is great because there's some things that you've done to the edit that I would have never tried. Um, and so this has been very educational for me, this little nuance, fine tuning type stuff, which I think when people get to this level, I think this would be very helpful. And there's there's some things that Chris is doing here that are, you know, I have adopted years ago when I first mm-hmm. listened to some of his podcasts. Like, I, don't, I can't tell you, and maybe Chris, you could talk about this just for a few seconds, but those, those fades that you're doing where the dialogue mm-hmm. ends and goes up and, the, the power of that is so powerful when you screw up and you have to like reposition something. You can just take the, well, I think what's called the ripple edit tool mm-hmm. in your world, and you can just drag the whole thing left or right, and boom, you're, you're there versus having to do with a bunch of dots. And Yeah, like for example, I'll give you an example. I, I made a cut here and I did a crossfade, and, and let's just say, for example, I put it here. Now watch, the music's going to fade up before Natalie's done talking. Beautiful and fun and special. It's a little tight there, and I can just pull it down, you know, 20 frames. I'm passionate about what I do because I really love weddings. They're just beautiful and fun and special. Yeah, for my audience that's watching this, I can't tell you how powerful that what Chris's trick right there, how powerful of a tool that is, because it's such a big time saver. I've been, so you know, I've been doing that for almost 20 years. I did it, <laughs> I did it on my Media 100, I did it in Final Cut 7, and I do it now in Final Cut 10. And, and when in that brief interim when I played with Premiere, I did it in Premiere all the time too. 
So if anybody's watching this like and only get one too. thing out of this video and they've never been doing that before, they'll learn this be glad. Because oh, yeah. not only can you crossfade between two volume settings here, here's minus eight dB and minus four dB. That's only part of what we're fading. We're also fading between this EQ setting yeah. and no EQ setting. This is the this is the controls for that clip. But here it's a flat, it it's flat. So you're changing between two volumes and two EQ settings, which is massive. I'm gonna, oh, make, yeah. I'm gonna make this one this fade a little longer. A great photo to me is when there's the beautiful light, wonderful emotion, and you get that moment, that split second moment. And when it's all there, it melds together perfectly. Maybe that's the way the magazines made me feel when I was little. <laughs> okay, so after little, we can fade up. We can lose our EQ. So I'm going to come over here and turn off the EQ on two clips. It's kind of nice. I can select multiple clips and do the same action to them. So I'm inspecting two separate items, and I'm going to turn off the EQ on both of them. And then right here, we'll make the crossfade. We'll do a nice slow hello. There we go. Maybe that's the way the magazines made me feel when I was little. And we'll bop the audio up a bit. Maybe that's the way the magazines made me feel when I was little. Hey, that thing that you just did right there, mm -hmm. when you clicked on it and then it looked like you, I'm going to guess you up arrowed like three or four times to bring it up, what, three or four dB? How did that, what did you just do there? Um, yeah, I used, uh, sorry, it's um, control plus and minus. I know that Premiere has it also. It's just a way to bump gain. Cool. I'll and to try and that. frankly, you can do, you almost certainly, I know you can in Final Cut, you can do it while the playhead is playing. You should be yeah. able to bump. Yeah, I know you can. Yeah, you can do it in Premiere, but I didn't know you could do that. Control plus. I'll have to definitely try it's, that. That's um, awesome. Yeah, it's Control plus and minus on the Mac. You should say, explain how you did this handheld shot. Yeah, that was with the uh, Nebula 4000 Lite, which is a pistol grip um, three-axis gimbal on the GH4, and it was just. And I could never do that handheld. There's no <laughs> way I can get that smooth. I never bought the Nebula, and I, I, I miss it. But there's a couple other things that are coming out since NAB that I, I definitely want to purchase because it's it's a fantastic tool. I was traveling extremely light. There's a, a picture of me that actually she took where you could see I got my A7S with a 7200 on an R strap dangling off to my side and in my right hand I'm holding the GH4 with the Nebula 4000 light and I was holding both things. My youngest daughter was supposed to carry stuff for me but she got disinterested and went down the beach. <laughs> and, and, oh yeah, uh, you were telling me there's one shot here where you're up, where is it, where you're up on the beach, where you're up on the bluff looking down. Here's the bluff you were on. Yeah. And then uh, here. And you said you had gone up to go check on your on your daughter and she had ditched you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bolted and there's like all these thousands of dollars of stuff just sitting there in the so, open. But I love I love the fact, that. Dave, that while you're up there checking on your daughter and your gear, is it you're like, oh, here's a shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, there's the shot I could get. So anyway, what have we done here? We um, we messed with the duration up here, and we did a little tiny, you know, edit to to match some stuff up. Um, we struggled with that a little bit. We're probably going to cut some of that out. Um, we did the Fenwick fade trick, you know, with the EQ and the thing, and then we also matched that symbol very quickly, and we did a little tiny subframe audio edit at the end to 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 marry those two reverse symbol sounds so we've we've changed the duration of the song we've made some we've cut some bits out we've looped some bits and we've done some fades and in, ins and outs and we made some little tiny content changes and did some optical flow in the best light and show who they really are timing.
and I think I think that you know you know I had mentioned that I wanted I didn't want to show her looking at the back of the camera just because you know that's one of the things you're always doing when you're cutting a story is like you want to make people look their very best and sometimes you know sometimes we see things and it's like oh that's not so bad but you know you kind of have to look at it from other people's point of view and I don't think the general public says oh she was chimping nobody uses that term but you know <laughs> But other <laughs> photographers might, and that's what you want to do is you want to make her look like a hero and a superstar. Yeah, that was great. Thank you very much for doing that. We're um, Chris, you know, because I, I listen to your podcast and um, you've got a website. So why don't you tell people where people can find you? You know, I, I have a blog. It's called chrisfenwick.com. And I, I, I realized I haven't updated it in four months. So I'm, I probably need some more stuff on that. Um, you can follow the podcast. Both podcasts are available at digitalcinemacafe.com. And the two shows that Alex and I do, uh, we do Alec, uh, Alex McLean and I do Digital Cinema Cafe, and then I do the Final Cut Grill, FCPX Grill. And you definitely have to mention uh, Twitter and Meerkat too. Oh, yeah. So the, the, you should follow <laughs> me on Twitter because Twitter's fun, and then Meerkat's super fun. And I've been doing these little you know, live broadcast from my phone. And then the other thing you should mention is that the reason I w we weren't able to hook up at NAB was that um, I got wrapped up in the FCP Works um, presentation suite. And they have, if you go to fcpworks.com, there are like 18 videos that I hosted at NAB. And that's why I never set foot on the show floor. But um, uh, I was over there, and in some of them, it's very hands-on with you know a whole lot of Chris Fenwick on camera. And a lot of times it was like, and here's the dude from Apple. And then I would walk off stage. So um, it was great, though. We had great content. And we even had some people saying that, we, that SCP work should be charging for the, for the stuff that they were doing there because it was really great. We had some workflow experts, and there was some... There was some hardware, you know, like, oh, we have a new camera. But a lot of it was, like, you know, really great. We had um, Denver Riddle from uh, Color yep, Grading I Central. Yeah. And he did this really in-depth thing with um, Color Finale, which is his new Final Cut 10 uh, plug-in. And so it was great. You know, it was great people. And, and if you go to fcpworks.com, they have a, a YouTube playlist where you can see all that stuff that I did there. Yeah, yeah, I might check it out. And and for, for people that don't know, I'm a premier guy, and oh, we know. You know I, 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 you know, Chris is on Apple, but the stuff that he's discussing here works. Doesn't really matter what you're on. Um, all this stuff that Chris has talked about is you know cross platform, cross, you know, NLE. So all these techniques can be used anywhere. So this is just you know, for me, I don't care what platform Chris is on, but you know, his experience and all these little tricks and tools that he does. Um, it's a fantastic learning experience for me. So that's, that's why I don't really care if it's on Final Cut or Premiere. It doesn't really matter to me. And I think the main thing to do about music is to, like we did in the beginning, you know, map it out. Look at what you're de dealing with. Listen to it. Think of it like a musician. A lot of people just look at a, a thing and they go, oh, it's a song. And no, it's not a three-minute song. It's a whole bunch of, you know, four-count measures. And, and so you want to kind of map it out and look at what you have to deal with. And I'll, t I'll tell you a real quick funny story, and then we'll be done. But many years ago, I was working with this producer, and uh, I was cutting a, a, a little Happy Faces show for him down in Southern California. And he says to me, he goes, uh, you know, there's a, there's, there's a trick to doing this. I go, oh, yeah, what is that? And he goes, well, what you want to do is you want to make the edits... Uh, land on the beats of the music. I go, oh, really? Okay, I'll look. In, I'll look into that. And I was like, really? You're gonna tell me that? That's a thing. And then, and then at one point, he was like hovering over my shoulder, and he was, and he was trying to tell me where the edit needed to be. But he was, he was vocalizing beats in the music that weren't actually there. So he's like, right here, <laughs> dump a dump, ba dump a dump a dump. I go, yeah, I hear you saying that, but the music doesn't actually do that. <laughs> so it, it seems silly, but really, you know, spend some time with the music, listen to it, and it it will absolutely help you. You know, it's like a lot of editors say, you know, you can't cut a story until you look at the footage. You know, same thing with, with, with audio. You can't cut the music until, you know, you really listen to it. And I also want to say, you know, when it comes to editing music, I'm primarily a video editor. And the music stuff, it's just another part of the equation. And I think that as a, 
as an editor, the more you know about music, and especially at the level that I work at, a lot of times we don't have the budget to like send the stuff out. Um, but I tell you, when you do and you deal with great, you know, composers and, and audio editors, it, it what they do is amazing. And frankly, I look like a hack when I do this. But there's a lot of things that you can do as an editor, and I, I would encourage people to experiment and try and really listen to the music. And I think you'd be surprised at what you'll be able to do. And one last thing I'll put in there is just from my last five years of doing this is that when you first start and you lay down music and you don't think about it too much, what's going to happen is you're going to get a happy accident where I mean, where the music lines up perfectly to some cut you just did. And you're like, whoa, that worked amazing. And you want it to happen more, but you don't know how. And that I think it just comes with experience. And like you said, listening to the music, understanding what's happening there, and then you know, like myself, I keep ele elevating my game over year over year where you're, you know, you got 30 years of experience or more. So you've got a lot of experience. You can do this edit so much faster than I did. Well, and sometimes you really just need to throw stuff on the timeline. And yes, there'll be some happy accidents and there'll be a lot of, you know, garbage. But sometimes you just have to get through it and then you can start going back and doing little trims and little nips and tucks and stuff. I did a sequence today with 32 fast one beat shots. And my first pass through it, there was a bunch of them that weren't quite hitting on the beats where I wanted them. And you know, you just go in and you pull a frame here, you stretch a frame there and all of a sudden everything locks in and it's wonderful. Very cool. Well, Chris, thank you very much for doing this. And um... Maybe we'll do it again uh, at next year. We'll, we'll, next we'll think of some other editing thing that you can make the monkey boy do for you next year. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for letting me do this. You bet.